All right, Shalom, Shalom. We are the real Hebrew Israelites coming day in and day out to prophesy the downfall of Babylon the Great, which is America. First off and foremost, our praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai Ba'ashem, Rakhar Kadash. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone. Salutations to the elect, wherever you may be. <coughs> Brother Shapaya from GMS Chicago coming at you again with a quick lesson through the spirit and power of, of Yahweh Bashem Shai. I'm just bouncing off this last video I did because here's the catch the Bible versus Kemet. Okay, the Bible literally proves history. All right, literally prove history, not myths, not legends, not folk talk. Or, or things of that damn nature, or a damn God fondle himself like Elder Yashawamba says and bust a nut and create all the universe. You know, we actually have prophecies proving certain people. Now, Daniel 8, and I, I really love, you know, the brother said in Chicago, you know, I love to get into the Daniels because it's one of my biggest faith boosters for myself. You know, because when demons fuck with me or get on my nerves, the one thing I always look to, I say, wait, but the Bible proves history. The Bible proves we went to slavery so far. That's real. Everything else is real. You know, Daniel's eight in the third chapter. I mean, <laughs> Daniel's eight in the third verse. Then I lifted up my eyes and saw, behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns. And the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other. And the higher came up at last. You had the Medes and the Persians. It was ruling that uh, together uh, at once, but the Persians ultimately took over. So the higher horn of the ram was the uh, Persians. All right. So this is going into the Medio Persian Empire. Hint, Medio Persian. The Persians came uh, at the end, came up last. Verse uh, four. And I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward so that no beast might stand before him because the Persian Empire was was a mighty empire. You know, when you go back to Darius, uh, Xerxes, uh, hey, it was, hey, it was a powerful empire. All right. As a matter of fact, uh, the Japhites at that time got taken down uh, by this kingdom. All right. Whether you had... Um, and listen, you had a lot of Jake amongst the Japhites, especially when you get into uh, that Spartan history, right? And you get into uh, the original Greeks history before the Mason Dodians came and took over. <clears throat> All right. It says, neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. And as I was considering, behold, a he goat, a he goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. Now, the reason why this goat didn't touch the ground, he was swift. Man, Alex and listen, Alexander rain, which that's well, let me get it. That's what this he goat goes into. Now, you can go watch the movie Alexander, right? And I believe, who is this? Uh, what's his name? Oh, hold on. I forget this guy's name right now. Oh, I forget this guy's name. Colin Fer uh, Farrell. Colin Farrell. That's who. He plays Alexander the uh, Second. You got Philip the Second of Macedonia, which Philip is spoken about in uh, the scriptures. All right. Matter of fact, you have Ptolemy. Ptolemy is somewhat. Yep. Here you go. Ptolemy. Ptolemy. All right, but that's a whole nother part I like to get into. Why did your Egyptians gods let Ptolemy take over Egypt? 
Why? <laughs> you know? Ooh. Where's the prophecy of Ptolemy taking down the Egyptian kingdom? Hmm? Or where's the prophecy of Alexander taking down Egypt? Where is that in the Book of the Dead or, 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 or Kemet? Where is that at? All right now it says he goat. Now hold on. Let's check this out. All right, so down here, look at the Virata. The Virata goat is basically the same goat here that he's holding. And I'll go to the second one if you can see it clearly. All right. The scriptures prophesize about this guy, Alexander the Great. All right. And what is he holding? The goat's head. All right. The goat's head. Okay. Now, he came to the ram well, that had the two horns, which I have seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in the fury of his power. Because Philip, Philip always wanted to conquer uh, uh, the east. He always, you know, that was his dream. But it wasn't set up for Philip to do that. It was set up for who? Alexander the Great to accomplish that. He was written in the prophecies, okay? It says, and I saw him close uh, unto the ram and was moved with clodor, which is anger, against him and smote the ram and break his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him. And he cast him down to the ground and stumbled upon him. And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Therefore, the he goat waxed very great. And when he was strong, the great horn was broken, and for it came up four notable ones towards the four winds of heaven. So when this he goat, you know, died, if you will, which brings you to Daniel's the eleventh chapter. Now, the actual uh, Persian king that uh, Alexander took down was Darius, the, uh, uh, Darius the third. Okay. Also, in the first year of Darius, Darius the Mede, which this is a different Darius, because just because you read Darius or you read King of the North or King of the South doesn't particularly mean it's the same person. All right. Most of the time, it's a successor coming after that original person. Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him. And I now will show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer uh, than they are, which was Xerxes. Go into your history. Xerxes, you, hey, brothers should know this, man. The elders always preach and tell us to get into the history so you can understand the mystery, okay? And by his strength and by his riches, he should stir up against the realms of Grecia, which that's what Xerxes did. Xerxes was on bullshit, but guess what? The most high was with Xerxes because how oh, I got to get it. So you can't do this in the, the commanded books. You can't do this, man. You can't go from precept to precept to get the understanding. Uh, where is it at? Should be too. Um, Daniel's four and twenty-five. That they should drive uh, thee forth from man, and thy dwelling should be with the beasts of the field. Now, this happened to Nebuchadnezzar, which is another person in history. All right? And, that should, uh, and they shall make thee eat grass of oxen, and they, shall, uh, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven. And seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of man, and giveth it to whosoever he will. Hey, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Most High, man. All right, the Lord set up the basis of men over his. Hey, the Lord gives certain people, certain men, certain nations their time to rule, and then He takes them down and set up someone else, all to show His power and to really show you that only the kingdom of Israel will survive or live for everlasting 
just off the simple fact of the law's tetrazy commandments, because you're supposed to li live holy. All right. So let's go back to eleven. Okay. Now remember in uh, chapter eight the four uh, notable ones. All right. But you have four generals: Ptolemy, Seleucus. Ah, uh, what was the? <laughs> I just went over this last week, Tuesday class. Ah, uh, that's a don't know. No, it's not him. Um, but his four uh, prominent uh, generals. All right. It says, and the mighty king should stand up and should rule with great dominion according to his will. And when he should stand up, his kingdom should be broken and should be divided towards the four winds of heaven. Same thing we read in Daniel's the eighth chapter. And not his prosperity, nor according to his dominion, which he ruled. Because, hey, he didn't have a son to sit on his throne. His kingdom should be plucked up even for others besides those. So you had a king of the south, which is Ptolemy. King of the north, which is Seleucus, which... Daniel's the eleventh chapter goes into the Syrian wars, so let's get it. Mm -hmm. It states Syrian wars are a series of six wars between the Seleucid Empire and the Ptolemaic, uh, uh, Ptolemaic uh, Empire of Egypt. Successor states of Alexander the Great. Okay. There you go. Cassander, Ptolemy, Antigonus. Yeah, that was Antigonus and Seleucus, man. Okay? Those was and I, and I believe he actually had six. All right? What's the Antigonus? I believe he had six, but pretty much the four generals, all right? And correct me if I'm wrong on their names, you know, but because I want to be on point when it comes to the uh, doctrine, all right? But I remember Cassandra, Cassandra Ptolemy Seleucus, and I believe, Ant yeah, Antigonus, all right? So that that's was, uh, and listen, when you watch this movie, Alexander the Great, Oh, each one of those generals was into it with each other. See, Esau Edom has always been divided from the Greeks to the Romans, even into now, man. And not, now one of those kingdoms uh, uh, stood. Okay, but this is you won't find this in you won't find this in Egyptian history, right? But let me give you something better. Even when you read the jo Josephus, it talks about these things. As a matter of fact. Let's get this. You can find Alexander, right? Maccabees 101. And it happened after Alexander, the son of Philip, the Macedonian, right? Which you could uh, attract uh, uh, Alexander's bloodline all the way back to Edom, all right? Which came out of the land of Chittim, which smitten Darius, the king of the Persians, the Medes, which was Darius the third at that time. And he ran in his stead, the first over Greece. Because you understand, they fought their armies. They didn't, they didn't burn down a, a, a Babylon. All right. They, they didn't, they didn't burn that down, man. All right. Because when you go into uh, uh, Darius and all them, hey, Babylon was a great city. All right. You had Syria, Babylon, when Medio Persians came in, they took over the land. They didn't destroy it. It was all transferred. Alexander didn't destroy it. Hey, you can watch the movie. He just sat on the throne. And hey, he slept in the uh, in the old king's bed. It became his. Okay. And many wars was won, many strongholds, and slew the kings of the earth. And went through to the ends of the earth and spoil and took the spoil of many nations, and so much that the earth was quiet before him. Whereupon he was exalted and his heart was lifted up. He gathered mighty strong hosts and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. And that's a hey, he went as far as India, man. They became tributaries, man. And after these, he fell sick and perceived that he should die. Therefore, he called his servants, his generals, right, such as were honorable, and had been with uh, had been brought up with him from his youth. 
and parted his kingdom amongst them while he was yet alive. So Alexander reigned 12 years, then died, and his servants bear rule over every one, of, every one in his place. And after his death, they put crowns upon them. So did their sons. Right. So did their sons. You have many kings of the north. And you have many kings of the south. OK. And the evils were multiplied in the earth. All right. Hey, hold on. Let me go back to this. Ooh, and there was a, uh, uh, there came out a wicked root, Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes, which he comes from the Seleucid Empire. So hold on. Let's go back to, uh, where was we at? Was it Daniel 8? Yep. Uh, aha, here we go. And out of one of them came a little horn, which which racks exceedingly great towards the south and towards the east, east and toward the pleasant land. The pleasant land, a what sits right on the fer fertile crescent, Jerusalem, right? And he magnified himself against the prince of hosts, and and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away. In uh in the place of his sanctuary, was uh cast in the place of his sanctuary was cast down, right? And, and hey, he 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 fought. Jerusalem up, especially the temple, man. Especially after, uh, I forget, because you can find it in Daniel 7, I mean 11. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Basically, Rome, the Romans drew a circle around him and said, you, had made a you have to make a decision. Because if you step out the circle, you're going to die. Uh, and I forget, he had to withdraw his ships. He had to withdraw uh, from somewhere. I forget exactly. I got to dive back into it. And, uh, he was so pissed off that he took all his anger out uh, on the uh, on the Jews at that time. All right. Let me see if I can get it. Uh, let me see if I can find it. All right. Yep, here we go. Daniel 11 and 28. Then shall he return into his own land with great riches, and his heart shall be great against the holy covenant. And he shall do exploits and return to his own land. At that time, at the time appointed, he shall return and come towards the south. But it shall not be as the former or as the later, for the ship, ships of Chittim shall be uh, shall come against him. Therefore, he should be gr grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. And so do he. I mean, and so he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsook the holy uh, uh, covenant. And arms shall be stand up to stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. And shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination. Uh, and they shall place the abomination that makes uh, desolate. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall corrupt. Shall he corrupt by flatteries? But the people that do know their power shall be strong and do exploits. All right, because you had you had some Jews, Bacadis, <laughs> if you will. All right. That were with this, and then you had, you know, the Maccabees that stood uh, that stood up, all right. Um, which let me go back to this just to prove that. All right, you could you could find all. Right, you could you could find what I just read all in Maccabees the first chapter, all right. Uh, right, and spake peaceful words unto them, but was deceit. What, what it just talks uh, talked about the flatteries, right? Uh, where is it at? Here it go. Here it go. Moreover, King Antino Antiochus wrote in his book to his whole kingdom that they should be one people. Everyone should leave his laws. 
So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented, it, consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols the abomination that made de desolate and profaned the Sabbath. Okay? So, A, this is the Hellenization uh, of Jews. Okay? But this is history. This is the antiquity of the Jews, which, let's go, the Maccabees. Let's get into it. The Maccabees, also spelled Maccabees, all right, were a group of, I ain't going to say Jews. They were uh, Israelites, man, predominantly from the tribe of Judah, rebel warriors who took control of Judea, which at that time was part of the Seleucid Empire, founded in the Hasmonean uh, dynasty, which these motherfuckers was Edomites, which ruled from 167 BCE to 37 BCE, being a fully independent kingdom from about 110 to 63 BCE, they reasserted the uh, Jewish religion partly, partly by forced conversion, expanded the boundaries of Judea by the conquest and reduced the influence of Hellenism in the Hellenistic Judaism, right? Which you can find, you can find all this, all this, which is legit history. You can find it in the Apocrypha, man. All right. Why don't Kemet go into this? Because they can't, they can't give you prominent figures in history in their text. Matter of fact, now this is something I used to go into, all right? Now, there's a treaty made, all right, between Solomon and uh, a certain pharaoh in Egypt in history, all right? Sorry, I had to blow my nose. Um, let me drink this. All right, in history, because remember, Solomon had uh, the pharaoh's daughter. He loved her. All right, it says Septunum Siamun, whatever, Siamun was the sixth pharaoh of Egypt during the 21st dynasty and built extensively in the lower uh, in lower Egypt for the king of the third intermediate period. All right, I'm just going straight to the point. It is suggested that Simon was the unnamed Pharaoh in the Bible who gave in marriage his daughter to King Solomon in order to seal an alliance between the two. And it gives you 1 Kings 3 and 1. Let's get it. Which I went into this a couple of years ago. Right. And Solomon, this is 1 Kings 3 and 1. Solomon made an affinity with Pharaoh king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he made an end of building his own house in the house of Yahweh in the wall of Jerusalem round about it. All right. And later conquered Giza and gave it to Solomon as well. First Kings 9 to 16. This identification is supported by Kenneth uh, Kitchen and William G. Den Denver, but has been challenged by other scholars such as Paul S. Ash, Mark W. Chavales, with the uh, latering stating that it is impossible to conclude that Egyptian monarch ruled currently with David inside. How is it not? You had other kingdoms around King, uh, uh, King David and Solomon. All right? And, you know, these scholars are limp dick assholes. But nonetheless, it says, cannot be justified factually since Simon, uh, Simeon Des precedes Solomon accession. Also agreed that the unfortified Giza was destroyed in the late 10th century and that the takers was most likely Pharaoh uh, Shosnek, the first of the 22nd dynasty. Nonetheless, nonetheless, no matter which Pharaoh it was, this treaty happened, all right? This treaty happened, all right? 
Now, whether Esau wants to hide certain histories and things of that nature, one can't exist without the other. You can't have Egypt without the Israelites. You can't have Assyria without the Israelites. You can't have ba Babylon without the uh, Israelites. You can't have Media Persia without the Israelites. What happened with, uh, who was it? Cyrus in the building in the second temple? When you get into, um, oh, hold on, let me get it. Let's get it. Because they had to go back and read. Yeah, St. Ezra's. They had to go back. Right, they, see, Cyrus, I believe it was Cyrus, gave them permission to build. Thus, uh, let me read this. Ezra 1 and 2. Thus saith Cyrus, the king of Persia. All right. Yahweh, thy power of heaven, have given me all the kingdoms of the earth and have charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. All right. Who is among you of all his people? Listen, even Cyrus knew the most high was with him. These heathen kings knew who was really in control. Who's there among you of all his people? His God be with him. Let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in uh, Judah, and build the house of Yahweh, thy power of Israel. He is the God, which is in Jerusalem. So they knew. All right. Um. So they went up basically to go build, all right? Um, now, let me get it. I get it when they try to stop them. All right, because you got here. But in the first year... Because it goes into it, man. I think this right here. Yeah, I think this is it. Restor uh, restoration of the temple resumed. All right. So. So check this out. Because these niggas try to rise up. And, I, and I'm trying to read it quick. Ezra is the fifth chapter starting with one. Then the prophets, Haggai, the prophet, Zechariah, the son of Edo, prophesied unto the Jews that were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of Yahweh, power of Israel, even unto them. Then arose Jerusalem, the son of Seithiel, and, uh, and Jeshua, the son of jo uh, Josachdach, and began to build the house of Yahweh, which is in Jerusalem. And with them were the prophets of, the, of Yahweh helping them, which... Let me jump on the spiritual wave real quick. We're doing the same thing right now. We're the third temple. We're the third temple right now, man. Okay? We're the prophets building the temple and being built. At this time came to them Tatanai, governor on this side of the river, and Sethra of Bosnia, Bosnia, Bosnai, <laughs> and their companions and said thus unto him, Who have commanded you to build this house and to make up this wall? Then said we to them after this manner, what are the names of the men that make this building? But the eye of their power was upon the elders of the Jews, that they could not cause them to cease till the matter came to Darius and then returned answered by letters concerning this matter. The copy of the letter of Tatania, governor on this side of the river, and Sheth, Seth Harbazniah, uh, and his companions, the Aphasites, which were on the side of a river, sent unto King uh, Darius the king. They sent a letter to him wherein was the writing thus, unto Darius the king, all peace. Be it be known unto the king that we went into the providence of Judea, Judea to the house of the great God, which is built with great stones and timber laid in wall, and, work, and this work goeth fast on, and prospereth in their hands. 
Then asked one of those elders and said unto them thus, Who commanded you to build this house and to make up these walls? When asked these names also to certify thee, that we might write the names of the men that were chief amongst them. And thus they returned an answer, saying, We are the servants of uh, Yahweh, power of heaven and earth, and built the house which was built, uh, which was built these many years ago, which a great king of Israel built and set up, which is King Solomon. But after our fathers had provoked Yahweh, power of heaven, unto wrath, he gave them into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, the Chaldean, who destroyed this house and carried people away into Babylon. But in the first year of Cyrus, the king of Babylon, the same king Cyrus made a decree to build the house of God. And the vessels of gold and silver of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took out of the temple that were in Jerusalem, and brought them to the uh, into the temple of Babylon. Those desires the king take out of the temple of Babylon, and there delivered in, uh, delivered unto one whose name is Shazbazar, uh, whom he made governor, and said unto him, Take these vessels, go carry them into the temple that is in Jerusalem, and let the house of God be built in this place. All right, and that's pretty much it. I mean, um. Now, let me go. Is this talking about uh, how Cyrus decreed it? And see, they had to go get the record. And there was found at uh, Akmetha in the palace that is in the providence of the Medes a roll, and therein was the uh, record thus written. And you can go into this for yourselves, man. Right, and then ultimately said, let the work of this house of God alone, let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house of God in his place. All right? Yeah, at one point we was building and we had a sword in our hand, man. All right? So nonetheless, th that's just history for you. All right? That's history. All right? Uh, uh. Right. Why? Well, this man is in history. This man is found in the Bible. Where are your prominent ca characters and uh, and commit besides the pharaohs? I'm talking about other kings uh, of the earth that had great kingdoms that ruled around Egypt that should have been known in history. Where is that written at? Hmm. I'll drink some wine. Of that. Where is that at? I'll wait. I'll fucking wait. Because you, you're not going to find it, man. You're not going to find it. You go through... <laughs> hold on. I love this. Second address, 11. All right? And 12. The three heads. You had uh, Crassus. You had um, Caesar. Julius Caesar, and you had uh, and Pompey. Those are the three heads that came back as uh, uh, the Flavian uh, uh, dynasty, right? Which was uh, you had Titus, Domitian, and then their father was uh, oh, his name escaped me. Hold on. His name escapes me right now. Vespasian, okay? Vespasian, Titus, and Domitian. Also, and when you go to the start of it with Glaber and all that, um, you have the year of the four, uh, the year of the four uh, Caesars. All right, this is in history. This is also written in the Bible. This is written in the scriptures. Matter of fact, you got Claudius. Let's get that.
forget how to spell this man's name right now. I do it like this. Okay. Yeah, I guess the A came before that. All right? Acts the eleventh chapter. Claudius is uh he's written within here, man. Alright? Felix, the governor, he's written in here. Alright? Things of that nature. Matter of fact, check this out. Longest ruling Caesar. <laughs> there you go, Augustus. <laughs> now, hold on. Let, let's do something here. Let's do something here. Mm, okay. Let me get it. Let me get it. Let me get it. Okay, hold on. Let me get it. Let me get it. This is going to the ancient Roman Empire. Okay, hold on. Right here we go. Verse uh second Edges eleven sixteen. Hear thou that has borne rule over the earth so long. This I say unto thee, before thou beginnest to appear no more, there should no None after thee attain unto thy time, neither unto half of it. So one of these feathers, which was Augustus, all right, which let me get let me get it in 12. All right. All right, which this was the fourth beast that was sh shown unto Daniel, which is written right here. The eagles which thou saw come out of the, the, the sea is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of uh, thy brother Daniel. But it was not expounded unto him, therefore now I declare it unto thee. Daniel didn't have understanding on a lot of the things that he was seeing. Alright? But let's get into this one uh this one feather. Uh verse 15. Right? Wherefore the second, so the second feather, Augustus came after Caesar, uh Julius Caesar, therefore the second shall begin to reign and shall have more time than any of the twelve. Who was that? Augustus, okay, Augustus, this is, this is history, baby, this is history, this is history 101 for you comedic ass cowards, man, that's cool, throw away your heritage, throw it away, right, because you're going to die like a fucking heathen, okay, and, I, and I, I'll give you this, I'll end it with this, man. All these prophecies that we could find in the Bible, all this history that we could find in the Bible, and you niggas don't, you just don't want to listen. <laughs> Jeremiah 17 and 4, And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from the heritage which I gave you, not only the land, but the language, and your laws, statutes, and your commandments. And cease, and I will, and I will cease thee, so like not cease. I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not, for ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. All right. So, fuck, fuck you guys, man. These niggas, these weak ass, infeminate niggas. All right. The hell with them, man. Now, yeah, you agree on some points, but nigga, you asking about fucking rape. That's that's taken care of, nigga. You asking about this, you asking about that. If if Komet is so real, what's your solution to the MOTB? What's your solution to the max uh the, the this venom juice? And should you take it? Should you not take it? Hmm? Where's your law, statutes, and commandments? 
and commit. Where's your morality and commit? Where's your welfare system and commit? At least the scriptures have one. Where's your where's your uh, dietary laws and commit? Hmm? Because according to some of this comedic shit, some of these gods was fucking their mother, sisters, all types of shit. That's immoral. And these are your gods. You should be do. You should be able to do the same thing. You had some some gay gods of Egypt. You sh- you should be doing the same thing. Hey, with that, hey, all praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Karkadash. Double honors to the elder apostles, a great millstone, and salutations to the elect wherever you may be. Ababa, cowards.